Japanese werewolves. Haken consider Japan to be their ancestral homeland. However, there are large amounts of Haken who have moved away from Japan. They have moved through areas like China, South Korea, even going as far as the west coast of the United States and Canada. Some werewolves believe the Haken are just a different branch of the Shadow Lords. While there are minor similarities, any connection between the Shadow Lords and the Haken is tenuous at best. And the Haken, they don't have a very high opinion of the werewolves and the Guru Nation as a whole. They didn't like the nation's attitude when it came to Gaia and working with the other changing breeds. So who are the Haken? They mostly make up the Hengioke's protectors and warriors. They are the first line of defense. They work very well with several of the other changing breeds within the Beast Courts, specifically the Kitsune and the Tengu, but they all fight against the Bakemono, which is the eastern version of the Fomori. The eastern pharaoh were not immune to the conflicts that arose between not only the changing breeds and werewolves in the area, but also with pharaoh and the humans that inhabited the area. Where the Haken differed from the Guru Nation, instead of attacking and culling humanity, the Haken believed that if they strengthened their ties with the humanity, they would strengthen their bond and they could grow in power. They could not only end the wars with the humans, but they could also end the wars with the other changing breeds in the other pharaoh. A very civil and level-headed approach. Now, in order to do this, the Haken, they infiltrated Japan's most elite warriors, the samurai. It took a few generations, but the Haken that infiltrated the samurai, they felt more connection with humanity and the way of the warrior than they did with their previous werewolf traditions. Even their descendants grew to appreciate the Japanese customs and traditions more so than what their ancestors did. And in Japan, as the wolf population declined, obviously breeding with wolf kinfolk became harder and harder to do, and this forced the Haken to be more integrated into human society. And in Japan, wolves have been believed to be extinct since 1905. It is rumored, however, that the Haken control a small population of wolves in protected areas that they monitor very, very closely. Now, to many of the Guru Nation who are ignorant to the ways of the Haken, they see these eastern werewolves who revere and worship Grandfather Thunder as just basically the same as Shadow Lords in a samurai disguise. But the Haken go way deeper than that. The view of the Haken blends the werewolf's tenets with Bushido, the way of the warrior. And although they are werewolves, they really are a group unto themselves. The secret packs of wolves that the Haken protect, they have kept the wolf side of the Haken alive, but vast majority of them live human lives and they come from Hamid backgrounds. The samurai code of Bushido has become part of their, their litany. They don't really follow the werewolf tenants that much anymore. But the Haken do have their own lineages, they have their own lines, but it follows more family histories than it does a specific tribe. All of the Haken family lineages have crests, family crests, and you will commonly find the Haken warriors displaying their family crest very proudly. And because the Haken are not bound to werewolf traditions, they are free to kind of do their own thing. They're more flexible. It's possible for them to be much more spontaneous. This is what's allowed them to integrate into human society without having any external pressures of the tribe or the nation. Obviously, the Guru Nation doesn't understand this, but it's this attitude that has allowed them to become prominent members of the Beast Courts. Because they are werewolves, they do have disputes and they do have internal conflicts within the family trees or the family lineages. However, these conflicts can be resolved through combat in a one-on-one -on -one stance. They're not putting whole tribes at war with each other or whole families at war with each other, it will usually be done in a one-on-one, -on -one, but it doesn't have to be just combat. It could be poetry, it could be art, it could be song, anything that can be done in competition with one-on-one. -on -one. Where they start to resemble the Guru Nation, they do have their Karens, and they commonly have moots at these locations. If a Western werewolf was to participate in a Hawken moot, they would feel quite comfortable at this gathering. 
Now this doesn't mean that you can't find certain werewolf tribes in Asia. The glass walkers and the shadow lords are commonly found in this area. And as cities have progressed, with the advancement of technology and finance, the glass walkers claim to have played a big role in this. The glass walkers also claim some responsibility for the rise of organized crime here, but the shadow lords have also done quite a bit in terms of organized crime in the area, so it's difficult to determine who's responsible the most for the rise of crime. Even in the modern knights era, the Hakan still have a feudal culture. This has brought them into conflict with the Shadow Lords as they adopted a more modern culture with the modern age, but the Hakan still try to keep the old ways alive in this sense. Western Guru activists have also come after the Hakan for not doing enough when it comes to the slaughter of dolphins in this area. The Hakan maintained that their position is not defenders of the sea, but defenders of Gaia. This claim of their defense that it's just not our problem, the sea isn't our issue, was a bit of a problem, especially when the Fukushima meltdown happened, because the Hakan definitely got involved when the bane started coming out of this toxically polluted area. Some Western Guru were also involved in this fight. Now before we talk about some of the groupings of werewolves and Hakan through Asia, as it's a very large continent, if you are enjoying today's video, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more like this from myself, then please hit subscribe with the bell notification. If you are a fan of my work and you would like to support me, I do have a Patreon set up. And for those who join at the $15 level, there is a monthly video vote where you can help decide what content I will produce. So if that's something that you're interested in, please consider joining me on Patreon. Now, as we've talked about, Asia is a very, very large continent, and Guru as a whole have had a minor influence in its history, not nearly as much as the West. When it comes to the Middle East, the Silent Striders are probably the biggest tribe to have any sort of impact there, although granted it's not that much. In Afghanistan and in Iraq, Red Talons have been found. They are combating minions of the worm, but they have also taken things a little bit too far, as they still have the belief that all humanity needs to be purged. So some of the Red Talons in these places have used the conflict in that area to take advantage of a bad situation, and further their own tribal ideals. And the Stargazers who can be found within Pakistan, they have not appreciated the Red Talon's actions, and this has brought them into conflict. And the Hakan have been involved in these conflicts to try to bring a peace and settle things down. In India, the Red Talons and the Children of Gaia have come into conflict over ideological differences on how to deal with humanity in the area. Both tribes have been fighting against worm influence there, as well as the Hakan and the Beast Courts, but they have also come into conflict with the Ratkin, as their numbers have been rising greatly in the area. If you were looking for some ideas in a Eastern style game of Werewolf, using these scenarios could be some ways to integrate other tribes. Granted, with a good enough story reason, anybody from any tribe could be found in the East. There's even rumors of Naga nests that have been found within India. As you can imagine, this hasn't sat well with much of the Guru nation, but the Hakan, they aren't particularly concerned about the Naga. Those who are familiar with the inner workings of the Beast Courts might know that the Naga still exist, although their presence has been hidden, but they are integrated within the Beast Courts. Regardless, much of the East is a mystery to the Western werewolves, and the Hakan haven't made this any easier as they don't trust the Western werewolves and haven't been willing to share information and history on their society. Although the Hakan and much of the Beast Courts, they were shielded, not immune, but shielded much from the War of Rage, they still harbor huge grudges and resentment towards the Guru Nation. What is known is that the Hakan are very capable and very fierce warriors. They possess a dedication to a craft that very few in the Western werewolf society will understand or even respect. Now, if you're interested in learning about some species that were made extinct by the werewolves, please click on the video on your screen now. Thank you to all of my patrons for supporting me and the channel. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.